All right, we're going to take a quick uh, kind of venture into a problem-solving method that we're going to use a lot in chemistry, referred to as dimensional analysis. Now, I know that many of you can probably solve these problems in a different manner, uh, not using dimensional analysis like I use it. But I'm going to ask that you please try and use dimensional analysis as I use it, because as we go along throughout the year, our um, problems get more complex. And it's better if you learn how to use dimensional analysis on the easy problems so that when we get to the real difficult chemistry problems, you're more comfortable with dimensional analysis and you're not trying to learn too many things, dimensional analysis and say stoichiometry or uh, how to work solution conversions. Okay? Almost every problem that we use in chemistry is typically some type of story problem or word problem. Now you've worked word problems before, but you might not be as comfortable with them um, as you need to be in chemistry. Like I said, there's no single method for solving all types of problems that we come, come to in chemistry. But dimensional analysis, sometimes referred to as the unit or the factor label method, involves problem solving techniques that can be applied to many different problems across the board. Even um, in math, we can use dimensional analysis. Now, to illustrate the, how this problem solving works, we're going to use some simple problem solving techniques or, or some simple problems um, to help you hone your techniques. Often, it is necessary to convert measurements expressed in one unit, such as millimeters, to another unit, such as centimeters, meters, or kilometers. Um, such conversion factors or such conversions are carried out using conversion factors, which are derived from a given derived from or given in tables in the section on the SI system. Now I believe I gave you those SI system tables that either you copied down off of the uh, screen or you can go back in a previous video and copy that down um, for you to use. The method of dimensional analysis involves working with these conversion factors and canceling out the units that accompany these numbers or measurements along with the numbers themselves. Okay, dimensional analysis is nothing more than a multiplication problem set up in a very specific way so that the units will cancel. Steps in dimensional analysis problem. The first thing we have to do is we have to read that problem and determine what units we are given. Okay, we have to first start off with to figure out what the, what they've given us. Um, and that may be a little convoluted in some word problems, but we, we can use the same problem solving techniques we use in math to determine what's been given to us. The next thing that we have to do is determine what units we are needing. So what is the problem asking you to do? Okay. Then we have to determine which conversion factors we're going to use. It's kind of like we're, the given is our starting point. What we need is our ending point and our conversion factors are going to be like our road map of how to get to our final destination. The fourth thing is to align our conversion factors so that they cancel. Um, this is so that they will mathematically cancel. We know that when we divide something by itself, it equals 1, so it divides out. So that's what we have to do with the units. We have to make them opposite in our multiplication factors so that they will divide out. And then we're going to use our calculator to determine the final answer. And the very sixth thing, or the last thing, is to report the final answer with correct units and in the proper number of significant figures, which we will have that discussion coming up on calculating with significant figures. So how to set up a problem using dimensional analysis? Well, we're going to start off with our given unit, so we have to determine what our given unit is, and we need to kind of figure out where we're going so that we can line up our conversion factors. Okay, And our conversion factors are going to be given, we're going to start off with our given unit, so if we start off with a given unit, our given unit has to go on the bottom, and our desired unit goes on the top so that our given unit will cancel out mathematically because they're going to divide. And we're left with our desired unit. So let's make an application to uh, an actual problem. Okay, Your car is approximately 3.2 meters in length. How long is your car in centimeters? Okay, So we first of all need to start off with what we are given. We are given 3.2 meters. Well, we need to figure out where we're going. It's asking us in centimeters. So that's our needed unit. 
So how are we going to get there? What conversion factor can we use? Well, how many meters is in a centimeter? Well, if we look at that chart that I've given you, for every one centimeter there are ten times ten there are ten to the negative two meters. Well, how do we get this? Centi means ten to the negative two. So if we have one centimeter, we have ten to the negative two meters. This is a mathematical conversion factor. So let's now set up our conversion. We start off with what we're given of 3.2 meters. Then we have to line up our conversion factor. Now, since we're starting with meters, meters has to go on the bottom of the conversion factor so that they will cancel out. And we're left with our desired unit or our needed unit of centimeters. Okay. The fifth thing is to put it in our calculator. So we're going to put it in our calculator like this, 3.2 times, and this is a fraction that we can put in our calculator, and we know to put in a fraction we can use the divided by symbol, so 1 divided by 10 to the negative 2, and 10 to the negative 2 goes in 10 caret negative 2. Make sure that when putting it in your calculator you use parentheses so that you preserve the order of operations, because if you don't have the correct order of operations, your calculator will give you um, an undesirable answer, it's not an incorrect answer, but an undesirable answer. And the very last thing that we need to do is we need to report our answer. So if we plug that in our calculator, our calculator is going to tell us 320. Okay, so our final answer must be recorded 320 centimeters. Remember, numbers without units in chemistry are meaningless. Numbers without units in chemistry are meaningless, and I take off all points. Let's look at a sep second example problem. Um, uh, that conversion kind of helped you learn how to set the problem up. Let's look at a second conversion problem that's a little more complex. One of your colleagues is celebrating her birthday this week. She will be 16 years old. How will she? How old will she be in seconds? All right. So first of all, we need to identify what we're given. We are given that she is 16 years old. The second thing we need to determine is what are we going to or identify our unknown? What desired unit? Well, it's asking us how old she will be in seconds. So we're looking for age in seconds. The third thing is to determine our conversion factors. Well, we're going to have to go from years to seconds, and unfortunately, there's no one, there's not one conversion factor that's going to take us straight from years to seconds. We're going to have to have a couple. We may have to go from years to days, then from days to um, hours, then from hours to minutes, and minutes to seconds, and so forth like that. So in this problem, we'll be dealing with multiple conversion factors. Okay? One year equals 365.25 days. We have to go from days now to hours, so in one day we have 24 hours. Then we need to go from hours to minutes. For every one hour we have 60 minutes and our last jump we need to make is from minutes to seconds. So we have to go from one minute to 60 seconds. Alright, now let's align our conversion factors or set up that long multiplication problem. The first thing we need to do is we need to start off with what we are given. We are given 16 years. Now, unfortunately, this is not like the last problem where we can make one single jump. We have to make several mini jumps in order to get to our final answer. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go from years to days. And we set up our conversion factor. Since we have, are starting off with years, years has to go on bottom, and our desired unit of days has to go on top, so that years will cancel. Why are years canceling? Well, it's because they're dividing out. Okay. So now our answer is in days. Well, the problem asked us to go to seconds, so we had to make we have to make some more another conversion. Well, for every one day, let's make let's make the next conversion to hours. For every one day, we have 24 hours. Well, days we have in the top, so it has to go in the bottom of the next. So one day is going to have to go in the bottom, and 24 hours will have to go up top. Why did we set it up like this? Why do they have to be opposite each other? So that they will cancel, so that these units will cancel. Now we have hours. Okay, we have hours. 
we need to go from hours now to minutes. Well, how many minutes are in an hour? Well, there are 60 minutes in one hour. Okay, Hours goes on bottom so that they will cancel, and we're left with minutes. Well, we're getting close, but we still, the problem asks us for seconds, so we need to make one more jump from uh, minutes to seconds. So if we have, we're starting off with minutes on top right here, minutes on top right here, minutes has to go on the bottom so that it will cancel, and we're left with seconds, and seconds is our desired unit. Now we have to put this in our calculator, okay, 16 times, and remember you have to use parentheses in order to put in these conversion factors, and these conversion factors are simply fractions. Now, a common mistake is to use the fraction key rather than the divided by key. In chemistry, it's always better to use the divided by key because that's really what a fraction is. Okay, so we put that in our calculator. Our calculator is going to give us a long answer: five hundred and four million nine hundred twenty-one thousand six hundred. And make sure that you put your units to seconds. Now, the next thing that we're going to talk about is: do we really use all of these numbers? That's where significant figures and calculations is going to come in.